<laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Jules. Time for another floss tube interlude. And I know I said I was going to do this on Sunday, but I'm actually, it's like Monday night when I'm doing this now. Uh, boy, I just hadn't, I didn't have any brain power yesterday. Uh, for those of you who do follow the pets channel, I put out a video yesterday morning ish, late morning, early afternoon, um, where I, I did, um, a little dog talk, um, about the blizzard and whatnot. Um, it was just all about the dogs and whatnot. And, uh, it took like four hours for me to put that together because it was just the first time I had done some effects that I was using and I ended up, uh, ugh, I ended up, my brain was just gone after that. So I just didn't, I stitched the rest of the day. I didn't get anything else done. Guys, I'm going to cover you up if you, all right, anyway, um, and they, I talk, they talk. So what are you going to do? Um, so anyway, hold on just a second because, okay, I covered them up. I had to. They're still gonna talk, but hopefully not as bad. By the way, let me show you my shirt. I like to party, and by party, I mean cross-stitch. I love that shirt. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll link it down below. Uh, but I've had this thing for quite a while. Um, all right, so, um, what was I telling you, what was I talking about? Uh, no, I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, yesterday. So uh, I stitched a lot. Um, I got some more stitching to do in the next day or two, but, uh, uh, I'm pretty happy with the stitching this week. Got a lot going on. So let's get to the questions. Oh, I was going to say what's going on. All right, let's get to the questions. All right. So <sighs> Alaskan Stitcher has become a new Ronnie Rowe convert, which I think is fantastic because many of us on this channel love to stitch Ronnie Rowe. And I am very much, there are a lot of comments about Ronnie Rowe this, this time around. So um, I think uh, I, I just love it. I just love the stuff. I still got to reach out to him. <laughs> Melissa Thompson was talking about the stitch with me where I, I was doing rainy water replace. And I think I was so close on that one that it sounded like a tennis match. It was like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. anyway, uh, I do know what you're talking about there. Um, Lori F naps, nap, save uh, at your place. Nap saves lives. Nap saves lives in my house too. I took two nice long laps this weekend. I can't even say it. two nice long naps. Try to say that fast. Two nice long laps. Two nice long naps. Oof. All right. You know me and trying to talk. Ooh, ooh. Um, all righty. Uh, so, yeah, I got a couple comments. Um, that's so awesome. Southernmost Stitcher. Um, oh, no. Southernmost Stitcher is talking to me about Ginger Gerald's latest video. Running a contest right up her alley. Oh, I'll have to go take a peek at it. I hadn't seen it. Um, and then uh, Lisa Sparkman and Angela... What's up, Angela? Way out in the UK. So was, both of them are talking about um, the Ronnie Rowe, uh, specifically the Ronnie Rowe room at the Nashville Needlework Market. Uh, so yeah, he's got all these new designs and stuff. And we'll have to, at some point, I'm going to figure out how to actually do videos where I can show you my computer and I can show you what I look at when I'm looking at patterns and maybe try and point out some areas where you guys you know, may not know about. But uh, we'll go into, when Ronnie Rowe gets his stuff up, we'll definitely go and look at his site and see what's up there. But I saw there was a, it, it was called Innocence, right? Someone, yeah, the new theme Innocence, which is just, it's like young women or girl faces. And they're almost, they look porcelain dolls almost, but the way that he has it designed with some color splashes, and stuff, it's just... I'm like, how do you how do you do that? It's just so amazing. So yeah, I I'm very much looking forward to seeing the new uh, all the new stuff. That is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> awesome. Rivendell Redhead said, if I uh, if I ever figure out how to get my my uh, where are they? Are they right here somewhere. I thought they were right here. My, uh, here they are. Nope, that's not it. My magnifiers, which are sitting here. On the, there they are. I knew they were up here. This, this table's a mess. But if I ever get my magnifiers where I uh, can get some suspended somehow, I definitely have to do a video and you guys could see what I look like. But you know, I was talking about my, see, I got this part's come off. And do you see the hair? Can you see the hair? Let's see. Let me do it with the background of me. There's like, but that's nothing because after I did my stitch with me the other day and I took these off a couple of times, I just, I have to t do something about this part, but, uh, I had a big chunk of my hair got in there. Is it bald over here? Maybe, maybe. All right. Nice. Uh, 
Rimadoe Redhead has also noted, uh, also realized that my dogs, Bailey and Zuzu, are both from It's a Wonderful Life. And yes, they are. So I actually met another Zuzu the other day. Uh, first time ever. And a uh, little puppy. And uh, and uh, I was like, that's a wonderful life. You know, and they were like, what? Because I, I think they just heard the name somewhere. And who knows, maybe it was from my Zuzu somehow. But uh, they, uh, they heard the name and they thought it was a great name and they used it. But they didn't know it was from It's a Wonderful Life. So that's pretty funny. Pretty darn funny. Yes, yes, Judy, I am getting close. I'm getting so much done on Rainy Water Place. I'm almost done with another page. So I'm super happy about that. Equ Equitime77 uh, wants a, one of the dog patterns from... Uh, um, uh, wants another dog pattern from uh, Ronnie Rowe. And uh, she linked me to the video. I don't mind if you guys link me to anything because um, I don't care. I mean, if, if my computer is like, hey, you're, they're trying to send you junk, and then I'll be like, all right, I'll go look at the junk. But, you know, you guys are always sending me to cool places, so I'm totally fine with that. So, but I think, uh, I think that's awesome. And uh, I'm so happy you guys are so excited. That is very cool. Nice. Oh, there's a new, a new, oh, that's awesome. A new person found the, okay, so Rebecca Bloom is asking, how long does it take to get fabric in and is it expensive? Expensive is going to be a matter of what kind of Ada that you get. There are cheaper Adas and there are more expensive Adas and same goes with any fabric that's out there. I cannot tell you exactly how much that we're talking about in terms of, because uh, a lot of times I don't look at the price. I, it's just it's just part of my, at least I used to not. But, you know, if you look at a project like, um, let's go, say a apothecary shop. So it's a, you know, it's a piece of Ada that is huge, you know, it's got to be like two and a half by two feet, maybe more. And we're talking a project that I'm going to work on for years. Um, if it was the only thing that I was doing, I'd still think it would take me at least two or three years to do. So the initial investment may seem like a lot if you're paying, you know, 30, 40 dollars for maybe 50 dollars for a piece of Ada that comes surged with, let me pull out docs in here, that comes surged um, on the end to, to seal the endings for you. Um, it may seem like a lot, but let me also, since I brought this up, I'll also say this when it comes to the cost of Ada. Um, I did, I've gotten some Ada before, not from a stitching shop, but I got it as part of a kit before and it was just such low quality that I refused to stitch on it. It, it was just, it, it was just not cool. And I tried, I did try stitching on it and I didn't think it looked very good. And I felt like it was going to tear at some point um, the longer I worked on it. So I, I didn't work on it for very long before I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do this. And I, I reordered my, my fabric. I'm always happy paying a little bit more for fabric because this is the base of your work. And if you get good quality fabric, it's something that's going to hold up for the rest of your life. So if you can afford it, paying a little bit more for a good quality fabric for your cross stitch is a good investment. Um, and like I said, also think about the fact if you're doing a full coverage piece, this is something that you're going to be working on for a very long time. And it may seem like a bigger investment in the beginning, but it, it will be worth it in the end. It will absolutely be worth it. How long does it take to get the fabric in? It really depends. I mean, I go to the store, I go to a stitching shop to, to pick up my fabric. So, um, I might, I have sometimes emailed them two or three days before I've shown up and said, I'm going to be there on this day. And thankfully they, they always have it done, but if they're going to mail it to you, it could take, honestly, it depends on what you're asking for. Cause it could take it. They could get it to you in 10 days. They could get it to you in three weeks. It just really depends on, um, if they have it in stock and, uh, if they have the proper quantity of what you want. So you can always call, you can always call and ask, um, Sue says, I, I hope I'm having my, my uh, creations, my projects insured. Um, yeah, so if we had a fire, the first thing would be the pets. All the pets run out the door, just like in Pee Wee Herman's uh, movie. Uh, go rescue all the pets first. And then I would run in and grab all the cross-stitch stuff. And, um, you know, here's the thing about that, though. Insuring cross-stitch... I'm not going to get that back. You know, yeah, I'll get money and whatnot, but it's the time involved and it's, it's, um, it's not a money investment. I mean, I guess I could get it insured, but 
you know, if I, if I lost it, if I lost my pieces, I would be very sad. I'd have the pictures obviously, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I have actually, I've never thought about that before. I'll have to talk to my husband about that. Not that I'm going to do it, but I just would see what he thinks about it. Um, yeah, I got more people loving Sheila's loving, um, find out when the new Ronnie Rowe will be out. There are other comments up here that talk about coming out in the next week or two. I still got to email him. I really do. Um, Oh, Linda crazy for yarn. Oh, that's sweet about it. Is Russ your dog? Or was your dog? I, yeah. Okay. So, um, oh man, everybody's talking about Ronnie Rowe. I just love it so much. Tracy likes the instant series. Um, oh, Lisa's saying they're available on the Ronnie Rowe website. All right, we're going to stop this talk right now, and we're going to just jump onto RonnieRowDesigns.com, and we're going to look at his homepage here. The Innocent series, nice, just released. I think they're all they're all there. Wow, they almost they remind me of fairies. They remind me of fairies. They're all ten dollars a piece. We're gonna have to do a video going over his website. They're just ridiculously awesome. I'll, yeah, there'll be a link down below. You can go check it out. Um, that is absolutely beautiful. Um, that is absolutely beautiful. And he has the dog series now on there. Um, he's got four dogs. Um, so I think, did he, does he also have the, the, um, the page, it was the sheds, but it wasn't a shed. It was colored, but it, what, row house. There it is. Row house designs. I love all oh, the, everything's on the site guys. Everything's on the site. So go check it out. It's all up. All the patterns are $10 a piece. And I think that is very cheap for the quality of the designs that he has and they're so unique. I love this row house series. I I might do the row house series. I absolutely love it. I don't know what it is that speaks to me about it, but it's just I like that. I like the houses and stuff. All right, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Stop stop distracting me. All right. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, you guys are so awesome. Ah, nice. Ah, southernmost stitcher Sheila, Vanessa, um, we're talking about Ginger Gerald's Henry VIII. I couldn't remember which, which piece it was that I've seen him work on. Uh, it's a heaven and earth design, stitching it on 28 account, one over one. Wow. That's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked out his site, you really ought to go check out his site. Um, he's got a very nice soothing voice, and uh, I think you guys would really like it. <laughs> Jocelyn says that my interludes make great stitching radio to listen to on your commute. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, I used to get comments where people said that I would put them to sleep, that they were just relaxing and they would just fall asleep to them. And that's funny. Ah, nice. Main Stitcher says, do not use Woolite. It has a caustic ingredient, but it will eat through wool. So I don't trust it for any of my projects. Dawn or shampoo, usually shampoo. Oh, that's interesting. That's awesome. Hey, Lori. Love seeing and hearing the dogs and the birds. Well, that's cool. <laughs> nice. Hey, Courtney. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. So, Dishes and Stitches. Uh, I was talking about um, audiobooks in the last uh, interlude, I believe. Um, so you, you got back into audiobooks because of that. Heard The Alchemist. I highly recommend The Alchemist. I think it's like modern day, I don't want to say fairy tale, but it's like a modern day fable. Um, in that the guy wrote it not that long ago, but it's a tale that could have been written a hundred years ago. It's just, it's really, really good. Um, you started The Woman Who Smashed Codes. Let me know what you think about that one. That one is really, really good. I'm about... I don't know how many, on the audiobook, I'm only four hours away from finishing the latest Dresden book, and I am like on pins and needles. I'm going to get most of it done tonight, I think. It's really awesome. Nice. Charlene got her first Ronnie Rowe, and she got the Serengeti, the giraffe. Had to get the pattern blown up gigantic. 32 colors. What have I gotten myself into it? One stitch at a time. You got that right. That is awesome. I love it. That is fantastic. Whoa, come on. There you go, computer. Um, 
What do I use to hang my pieces? Hey, Priyanka, do I drill a hole and put a nail? Um, you know, that's my husband's job. Uh, he usually puts up either screws or, yeah, I usually use screws and a lot of times we'll actually put um, like drywall anchors. Uh, the pieces are, when they're framed and they're hung, they're, I don't know, not more than five pounds. I mean, you have to think about that your cross stitch is gonna be a little heavier than your standard painting or something else. So you just don't wanna like, just put it up there. And I almost always get glass on mine. Um, for most of my pieces, there's glass on the front just to protect it from the elements. Um, I don't want smoke or um, my cooking or anything like that to get impregnated into the, <laughs> into the fabric so, or, the, or the floss, that would not be good. Nice. Oh, Florence, you lost your boy Jack, your dog Jack. Oh, man. Oh, that's awesome. Jack sounds pretty awesome. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you lost. I'm sorry they passed. Um, I can understand that. Special, special friends like that are definitely um, few and far between when it comes to those guys. Um, we had a crazy blizzard last week. I told you guys about that, though, last week. It was nuts. Nice. Sheila emailed Ronnie Rowe, and he responded. Ronnie Rowe responds to emails. He absolutely didn't. Oh, Kimberly. Oh, Kimberly. What the heck happened? What the heck happened? All right, guys. I got a question here. How do you start stitching again when a friend has lost the majority of your supplies for cross-stitch? <sighs> All right. So... Obviously something happened. Obviously there is an issue there. But putting aside that, I would phrase this as what, you know, what would you do if, you know, you had a fire or you had this different things and you, and you lost a bunch of your stuff. Try not to frame it in the, you know, frame it in that person let you down or disappointed you or, or whatever, or whatever happened. If you're going to continue cross-stitching, and I hope you do, I would say find a new pattern that you love. Um, if you are, aren't already doing something that you absolutely adore, then find something you love. And then in terms of replacing supplies for that, you know, one step at a time. You know, you don't have to get a bunch of different things. You can, you know, you, you never know when a setback will lead to something better than you would have been on than that trail that you were on before. Um, I had two years worth of posts and pictures and articles and things that I had written for my blog and all gone, all gone because I didn't back it up. And when I went to change the server, went to change the, per, you know, the person who was storing my website, my host, basically, it just went away. And I was really upset for like a, like a day, you know, and then I, and then I always try to look at it as things happen for a reason. So I retooled everything and I'm actually, I'm quite inspired now. I'm actually like, I, now I'm going to make this even better than it was before. So in terms of your situation, I would look at it as a chance to kind of focus in on maybe something smaller or just like one project or but in terms of don't don't let somebody else ever take away a hobby that you love. Don't let them if they want to say something or do something or anything negative towards something that you care about and it doesn't hurt anybody else, it doesn't hurt them, it doesn't hurt you know this or that, but you know, you just just let them go do their thing, you know? I have never had anybody who has been like put down my cross stitch. I've had in the past, I've had other people put down other things and I'm just like, all right, I've had to learn how to not let that conflict with how I feel about what I'm doing. So just, I don't know. Does that help? Does that help Kimberly? Write me back. Send me an email if you, uh, if you, if you still want some more clumsy words that I'm going to say. Oh, goodness. Nice. Seaweed Otter, I'm going to watch that video after this video. I will. I will. I will. Um, oh, nice. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? 
fabric pens. You just got them and they're freaking awesome. They just disappear with a hot iron and they write like a ball pen. They disappear with a hot iron? So have you ever tried washing them out? That, that I don't know. I've, I'm going to bookmark it and so I will come back and look at those. Nice. Lisa Ridgeway had a brainwave. She uses a cleaning pad called an eraser. It gets marked off of walls. Are those, are those the white, the pure white like rectangle things? Um, I've just tried it on a hidden piece of Ada. It got the pencil off. Nice. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? All right, we're gonna have to try that out. We're gonna have to try that out. Um, nice. Sharon W. Excited for Captain Marvel going on Sunday. So you've already seen it. Cool. Baseball's coming along. It is coming along. Yes, I did see the, I have seen the Ronnie Rowe video. I just love it. Everybody is like having a great time. Nice. Christina from the UK lives an hour from London. Hello, hello. Um, ex that's excellent. Nice. Wow. Terry Lee Crafts, you got 306 stitches in while you were watching one of my Stitch With Me's? That's ridiculous. That's impressive in an hour. Uh, that's awesome. I swear. Super Peace Rose is reaching out to you saying, hey, there's there's other people that have videos that shows the Ronnie Rowe display. So I'm going to definitely, you know, I, I may put this on the, on the blog too, but <laughs> who's your apple? Uh, was in, is in O'Hare airport last week in Chicago. He kept saying the bears. Everybody says it that way. Everybody says it that way. Yeah. It's from an old, it's from the, the bears guys, you know, the bears guys on, uh, uh, it was Mike Myers and uh, Norm from uh, Cheers and a couple other guys. I forget exactly who it was. That's cool. I, I, I love it that you that you think of me though when you see it. So, but that's I that's where I get it from. Dub Bears, and so that's pretty funny. Hmm. Okay. So uh, Diane B. All right. This is a gritting comment. I used to I used to grid by stitching lines of contrasting thread, but now I use the water soluble pen with higher counts. So like 25, 28, 32. Um, I fold the fra fabric. I fold the fabric. I fold the fabric where I want the line and run the pen over the edge of the fold. That way I get a very thin line right where I want it. Excellent, excellent tip. Thank you so much. Oh, Sharon K. What is up, Sharon K? I still got an email yet. I can't believe it. Wait, oh, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Um, talking about Hade. <laughs> you had a feeling you should check out the um, clearance area. And there was a pattern called After Cloud Sun. Oh. Oh, did you get it? Wait, I got to read more. Holy cow. You always write me a book. <laughs> oh, that's really awesome. Finding it hard to decide what you want to work on. You know what is the, the great benefit of that is that you have so many different things to work on. That is, that is awesome. Yeah. Life is super crazy. Yep. You got it. I gotta, I gotta get back to you. I will get back to you. I promise. All right. Um, memory Baker, who do I watch on floss tube? Um, I don't watch as much as I used to. And part of it was because I, I don't want to copy anybody else. I don't want to, because everybody's so distinct and I don't want to start doing something that somebody else is doing and watch them. So I just, I flit in and flit out um, of a lot of videos. Um, and I actually want to create a little place on my, um, on my blog, which actually talks about um, all the different ones that are, uh, all the different floss tubers and like put everybody on there. Because there's all, all the times, I mean, I, I don't know if I could tell you anybody, like I said, I've, I've watched Ginger Gerald. Um, Oh man, guys, I'm serious. Like, I, I can't remember by his names right now. I really can't. Like you put me on a spot. Um, hold on. Let me stop this. Okay. I'm back. Um, oh goodness. Like I said, I usually will flit into, um, a little bit of a lot of different videos, but if, if I'm going to watch a little bit more, um, I'm just looking down through everybody. Uh, just keep stitching. Always makes me laugh. Um, Pam and Steph are adorable. And uh, <laughs> they are quite the hoot. I can only imagine what it would be like to kind of just hang out and 
stitch with them and whatnot. Um, let's see, wait, I just had one that they're adorable. They're also adorable. Sunshine Stitchers. You guys seen Sunshine Stitchers? They're, they're really funny too. They're cute. They're so cute. Um, oh man. I still remember Bendy Stitchy Michelle Garrett was, um, one of the first people to start commenting on my videos when I started doing these a couple years ago. And I, very much appreciate that. So I, that was pretty awesome. Um, there are seriously like so many, and I don't want to like continue to saying it because part of me is like, I worry, I don't worry, but I know that some people will be like, why didn't you mention my channel? Which is why I want to get the list of all the floss tubers. Cause there's so many people who are newer and that are, that are like, haven't done maybe 15 at most videos and um, there's a lot of them I'm sure you guys like like myself I'm always running across new people all the time but that's kind of where um, that's kind of where I'm where I'm at with that uh, let's see here Bizbowl Batter hits ball to short. Short bobbles it. First baseman is looking at the shortstop, waiting for him to throw the ball. Is that what's happening in that picture? I haven't even, like, actually looked to see what's going on. Is he bobbling it? I don't know if he's bobbling it. Let's pull it out. Uh-oh. I got two stickies in there. Come here, you. Let's see what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Okay, so check it out, all right? So if we're trying to figure out what's happening in this baseball picture, I think, okay, first of all, I can see now batters running third. Everybody's all messed up in this thing, but look how it's, I think that's the ball right there. Is that not the ball? And that guy is like, I don't know if he's faking like he might catch it, but he's not going to. And isn't this guy like running up to get the ball? All I gotta say is there's tremendous laziness from most of the players on this team, especially the catcher. I mean, come on, dude, you standing there? I mean, come on, man, you're supposed to be racing down to first base to to back up the play. Come on. Anyway, all right, this video's gonna take forever if we don't keep going. <laughs> um, all right, I gotta pause. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Um, I know you guys are like, you never went away. What are you talking about? Um, all right, where was I? Tamara, it has just started Williamsburg 1776. Good luck with that. That's a fun one. You're going to enjoy that one so much. Um, Sharon K, yeah, uh, Reaper has still is still missing. I'm pretty sure he's on the mess that is my desk right now, and i got to clean this up, but it's, yeah. I've got dachshund spread everywhere from the stitch with me this weekend, and I've left it up here. I need to keep stitching on it. I don't know if I'm going to get the page done this week like I said I was, um, because everything's just scattered everywhere. Isabel's Moments with Crafts has a question. Have I ever run into a problem where I bought floss for a project, but then ran out and had to buy more of the color, and it's the same color, but it's darker or lighter than the, the original color? Yeah, actually, I've had that problem more with, like, um, the more specialty threads, where I'll get a batch where there may be, like, four colors in there, and on this one batch, like, some colors are more prominent, and then on the next batch, other colors are more prominent. And it has bothered me and bugged me at times, but I just, you know, there's so much to stitch that I just, I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to stitch and move on. It's okay. It's okay. So yeah, I have had encountered that and I've just, either I modify it by finding something that looks better or you could always go to a different store and see if they carry something that's closer to what you want. But yeah, that's happened. That's happened. Sometimes, you know, I guess you don't know sometimes what happens to the floss, um, how old it is, um, you know, if it's been sitting like opened up somewhere in a in the back of a store and maybe there's dust or something that's accumulated on it. Who is to say? Nice. Lala has finished the second page of Starry Night. That is awesome. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Jennifer asked me, do I ever wear my hair down? Um, uh, man, I keep getting all these, like, crazy calls. I don't know who's calling me. Um, I don't really wear my hair down. I, I like, I love the ponytail. I do not get headaches from this, even though it, it holds, I feel like it holds all the thoughts in my head. It keeps everything in one place. Um, my husband wished I wore my hair down more often, but I've always been, I like the ponytail. I like to play with it, but it, the one, when my hair is long and whatnot, it just kind of goes on my face and I'm like, 
Ah, oh, I just get so hot and I don't like it. Ah. Alexandra. Are you in Scotland? How do you say that? Is it Cumbria? 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 I don't know how to say that. The Lake District in Cumbria. Nice. Nice. You gotta get your Ronnie Rose. Sir Popalot. Leah Ravenga. That is a cool name. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for commenting. Uh, watching me for months but never commented. You're making your own floss tube videos. Remember that name, guys. Leah Ravenga. Go check her out. L-E-A Ravenga. It looks like revenge instead of E at the end. It's an A. I like it. Water Place. It's beautiful. Uh, you, you love water, rainy water place. It's so beautiful, but you could never stitch so much gray. Um, it's not just one color, though. It's multiple colors. And, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That, that's why I rotate pieces, because when I'm working on something that is like, well, I'm can, getting kind of tired. Well, like Reaper is the same way. Like Reaper is really dark through a lot of it. And I'll do Reaper for a while. And then I'm like, okay, I got to move on to Old World Map 2, because that's way more colorful. And I need that. So, I could read the best of spam mails to you guys in the next Stitch With Me. I don't think it's, these are G-rated Stitch With Me's and uh, Audacity. Okay, great. Um, so, I, I really don't want to read the spam mails that I used to get. Now I don't get them because I installed a different spam filter and a better spam filter in the um, blog. And it's, those things have been getting caught lately. So, I like it. I like it, like it, like it. Um, and you use Audacity for sound recording and editing. That's awesome. I will take a look at that because I definitely want something different. Um, I want, I just want to try something new, try and, you know, get some different, I hope you guys like the new dog video though. It's, it's pretty, it's different. It's different. I'm so bad at writing dog talk. Like, you know how people write like how dogs or cats talk and it's like this goofy version of English that comes out. I'm not good at all at writing it. I'm just like, oh, I went too far. I went too far. Ronnie Rowe cat designs, Jennifer. Nice. Uh, yeah, there are a couple. I think at least a couple that he's done. <laughs> birds. Everybody's laughing about the birds. Holy cow, Fiona bought Rainy Waterloo Place. Can't wait to start it. Do you find you have page lines when you finish one page and start another? I don't understand. What am I not understanding there? Do you have page lines? Do you mean like, like you can see the difference from one page to the next in the pattern and like in a stitching? Cause I, I usually don't. Um, huh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Is that what you mean? Let me know if that's not what you mean. Let me know, let me, let me know, let me know, let me know, let me know. Sir Popalot. Oh, I must've said Sir Popalot in one of my videos. I don't even, I don't even remember. Dovey. Hi, Dovey. Um, best parking tutorials on YouTube are from Carolyn Mazio or Pam's Crafty Corner. I agree. Um, Carolyn is the one that I actually usually usually go to for my if I want to if I want to learn something or go over something. Uh, but Pam's Crafty Corner also has some great ones too. Um, if you want advanced mathematical precision parking, look to Blit Stitch. Now that is not somebody that I have watched, so I will have to look at that. Very cool. Marsha wants to know, for my hand cramping, have I attached my hoops to a table or a floor stand? I haven't tried that. Um, I don't, I don't, hmm. Whenever you guys present me with something new that I gotta think about, I'm always like, oh man, oh, part of me is like, oh, I don't like doing new things. New things are so hard. And the other part's like, that might help a whole lot. And the other part's like, no, it's not gonna help. It's gonna make things worse. All right, all right, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, <laughs> but um, I haven't tried that. I could definitely look into that. I'm trying to think. I have had other things that I've had in my lap before that I've tried to use, but most of the time now when I stitch, I'm stitching at a table and um or my computer desk really and so because i can keep the dogs away from me because they're all on me all the time and so i stitch kind of just i kind of bend over a little bit and stitch right there i don't know i i never do the same thing twice i'm pretty confident that's exactly how i stitch i never do the same thing twice oh 
nice. Ariana got it as well. Ariana, I have, I found it as well. I found the fabric, I found the pattern, and soon I will find the color chart. If not, I may reach out to you. Uh, I really got to get organized. I have a, I have a video coming out on organization. All the things that I don't do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, Lady Bug Stamper loves the birds. Birds, somebody loves you. <laughs> They're so funny. Oh man. Alice, Alessandra, that is a beautiful name. Uh, this is from an earlier floss tube. You know, we've been doing 10 stitches on 25 count for a stitch in time and I'm satisfied with the coverage. I've heard though that on 28 count is just about perfect. The tents I'm doing on Wonders of the World, which is what, 25? It looks really good. Yeah, I, it probably would look great on a 28. Nice. Isabel's moments with crafts. This is not a, I don't feel like this is too personal a question. I mean, this is fine. Do we ever want kids of our own that aren't fur babies? We love children. We love kids. Um, we dote on uh, nephews, nieces, um, friends that have kids. Um, anytime I see a little baby, I'm like, oh, baby, I gotta touch baby. Um, I love them. And I love giving them away when they're done. <laughs> I love giving them back to their parents when when I'm when I'm done with playing with them. Um, you know, I am in my my mid forties, and my husband's in the same position. We only met each other like four years ago. So by the time we met each other, it was just kind of too late for us to think about wanting to have kids. And I'll be perfectly bluntly honest, I am too selfish to be a parent. Um, I love. I love my dogs and I love my animals and everything, but I am able to partition my time so that like they're off doing their thing and I can stitch or work on work or do whatever I need to do. I could not at this point actually, like I say we wanted to adopt. If it ever, if it ever had to happen, we would be great parents. I have no doubts about that. My husband would be an amazing father. Um, and it's unfortunate that he never was but not everybody not everybody wants to be parents per se and uh, like I said I I just I go about my days loving to see kids and play with them and tickle them and tease them and send them back home <laughs> but uh, anyway no it's not too personal it's totally fine uh, pack up your troubles in your old kit bag Libba, Libba Bray, that's what it is. Okay, I jumped into the, the quote, and then I'm like, well, that sounds like Libba Bray. And then you say, oh, man, that's so cool. Yeah, uh, so Libba Bray, if you guys ever, um, oh, but you got to listen to the audiobook. It's so good. Um, Libba Bray wrote the Diviner series. The, I totally love it. Oh, my gosh, four, four grams, crickets in, in bold text. My son had a bearded dragon. We ordered the crickets online in bulk. Kept them in a huge plastic tub with a mesh screen top. I know where this is going. I put carrots and maybe water inside to feed them. They were full of nutrition when eaten. I wonder if your reptile is killing the crickets and storing them in the bowl. Oh. Are your crickets... I'm sorry. I, I thought that, that was going to turn into... And then one day the top was off and there were crickets all over the garage. Um, are your crickets dehydrated? I am vegan now, so I was surely burned for my... Past involvement in cricket deaths. <laughs> you, you, okay, I think you're you're helping them out now. Um, you know I, the crickets are doing great. I have managed. I keep putting things in form. I'm putting a little bits of apples and I'm making sure that they get water on occasion. But they're still alive. They're in there. I'm not sure if there's any dead ones in there. Hard to say. But I need to um, need to give them a little bit more water and put more in there. You know, I didn't think about the fact that he might have been killing them and then soaking them before he ate them. Um, that's always a possibility. Dishes and Stitches wants to know, what would my parakeets do if we got another parakeet to keep them company? I would not do that to them. That's definitely a bonded pair. They have been living together by themselves together for about a decade now. So, holy cow, they'd probably be feathers would be flying. They get mad at each other like an old married couple, like this whole time. Oh, Laura, how are your sharks doing? Blue Sharks game this last Thursday. Nice. Sharks are in first place. Yeah, they are in first place. They don't really need what's-his-face that got hurt, do they? They could trade him away. Well, I can't trade him away. I think the trade deadline's passed. Um, 
What's up, Robin? Glad you enjoyed the Stitch With Me video. That's awesome. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Tammy says, I decided I would make a decision roulette wheel for all of my projects so that when I ask what we, th when I ask, when I ask what you think I should do or should work on, you just spin the roulette wheel and then there it goes. Nice. The decision wheel says, decision roulette wheel says Tower of Babel needs my attention. Got you, dude. Got you. Oh, that's so awesome. You guys are just going crazy. All right, I'm going to pause it. All right, so... Um, uh, Rebecca was very sweet. Rebecca M, um, reached out to me, um, well, with a comment and I get messages, whether it's emails or comments or private messages, things like that, where people tell me that they hadn't cross stitched in forever and they came across one of my videos and they did rediscovered their love for cross stitch and now they're back into it and they love it. And I just think that is the coolest thing. And if that's all outside of entertainment value, because of my goofiness and whatnot and the birds being silly, um, you know, if, if, if all that happens is just more people love what they're doing, I mean, isn't that what life is about? You know, I, I just love it. Thank you so much for letting me know, um, how much you enjoy stuff. I, I'm just super, super thrilled. And I do, I, I you guys know, I read every single comment. You can see that I do that. So I always, um, I'm always there. So, okay. So I have to, um, uh, before the next weekly update, um, I need to, uh, compile the vote, the new votes for, um, what I'm going to work on next. So after this week with the dachshunds, so I got to go through and get that all squared away. Oh, goodness gracious. A lot of people popped up with Ronnie Rowe on this, uh, new, on this second part of the vote. Um, Oh, I saw that one. Uh, love to stitch two. Wow, you got seven hundred. Wow, you got a lot of a lot of stitches done on your Hayd Sweetheart Cottage two by Thomas Kincaid. I, I that's a really pretty one. I like that one a lot. Um, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> um, Marsha wants to know how am I managing the material of Wonders of the World now and my plans for when I get to the middle. Well, that's going to take a while, so I don't, I don't have any plans yet. Um, right now I stitch on it virtually all the material. Oh, I don't have it with me, do I? No. All the material is actually in the bag and I only pull out the little, the same thing I do with Old World Map too. I just, I store most of it, kind of like a rogue hair. It's attacking my eyeball. Um, but, um, <sighs> All right. Anyway, um, uh, most of it stays in my in my crafty bag, and I only pull out the part that I'm working on. And so, uh, and I don't know what's going to happen when I get to the middle of that fabric. <sighs> you know, that'll probably that'll be like the that'll be like 30 years in the future, and they'll have some kind of crazy cross stitch device that will I don't know. It'll make it easier for me. Maybe I'll come up with a device, and you guys, and it'll be called the jewels the jewels frame or something and and we'll all remember how I got started. Huh. Oh nice. Anna Nunez, uh, Swan Song by Robert McCammond. You found the audio audiobook here on YouTube. Nice. I'll have to check that out. Um Anna also wants to know and I have a, I have multiple people that have suggested me in the past about letting my floss unwind. I'm a very impatient stitcher and you <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm stitching all the time. So sometimes I do, if I can, if I get like a snag, I'm like, okay, let me fix the snag. If I get a snack, second snag, that's when I'll usually let the floss unwind and I'm like, okay. But I don't do it as a matter of routine. Um, a lot of it is just because I'm, I'm just trying to stitch so fast because I got so much to stitch. Nice. A lot of people also like dachshund, which I'm doing dachshund this week. Maybe we'll put dachshund on the end of the thing, too. Oh, nice. Oh, it would be purple. You probably saw Captain Marvel already. You're going to have to let me know what you think. And though It may be up here somewhere. You guys left a lot, a lot of... Um... JV is asking me, how about I get Star Wars some love? Which Star Wars? I got two going on, and I got more projects than that. I just haven't started it, but... Huh. Nice. Karen. What's up, Karen? My parrot person. Thank you for the email that you sent me too. Um, Peacock and P. 
Captain P is really good too, um, had a discussion on gridding. She said, you have to make sure that you use a hard leaded pencil and then the artist eraser. The hard lead is not as dark and heavy. She says, the artist eraser can be used on brass to take the tarnish off. Really? Wow. I will chime in one more time after I try it. Did try with a treat pen did try with a cheap pencil with a hard lead and my fabric eraser and it did work. Go figure. Huh. We're discovering new things, guys. Uh, Gabriella uh, asked me, what do I do with my extra fabric, especially on the bigger projects when stitching in hoops? Just told you. Um, everything stays in a bag, which is why I love my project bags so much. And usually why Wonders of the World and Old World Map 2 always stay in their project bags. They never are out of it at all because they're just too huge. It's just, I like shudder to think what the dogs would do with them and they would do something to them, trust me. Um, nice. It is well. You, oh yeah, stitch with me doing um, it is well. Absol oh yeah, 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 totally, totally. Um, yeah, we'll have to definitely do that. Hold on. All right, so I got caught up in Sharon Kay's book. <laughs> you always write that. It's okay. It's totally cool. I like hearing what you're doing. So uh, you were um, commenting on my husband doing the gardening this year. We're actually doing some raised, I should not, no, he is doing some raised garden beds. <clears throat> he used to be a big time gardener. He loved, he had so much stuff and then he met me and then uh, so, you know, stop doing it. And so now he's doing it. We're going to put it out on the patio. It's going to be awesome. We'll show you some videos when we get that. He was working on the boxes this weekend. Um, so we definitely have uh, a lot of stuff going on. Nice. Autumn's granny. I do have one mad dog show. I have one mad dog. Oh, I'm telling you, man. Bailey. Ba Bailey is the feature of the video. So if you guys haven't seen it... Um, Oh, Tracy Cabrera. Uh, so excited to see the dachshund. Can I ask where you got it? I got it off of Gecko Rouge UK. Unfortunately, it's, the last time I checked, they didn't have it on their site. You may want to reach out to them uh, and actually ask them if they by any chance still have it. But they tend to rotate their stuff, it looks like. So I don't know if they have it like they're not putting it out. But there are other dachshunds that are on the site. So they may not have, they won't have mine. It's not really mine, but um, but they have other dachshunds that are out there. I just like this one because it looks like he's wearing a fuzzy sweater, you know? He's got he's got crazy color skills there. Oh, E Pluribus. By the way, I finished E Pluribus. It was on the blog, so if you guys have seen the blog, it was on there. But I finished it, <coughs> including the missing stitch that a few of you guys have pointed out in the past and someone else pointed out to me on the blog, and so I got the missing stitch put in. We're done. I'll show it to you guys on Thursday. Ah, other people do things like diamond equitime is back. Other people do things like diamond painting on their stitching channels. You don't see a problem with me doing my jigsaw puzzle on here. What do you guys think if I ever did like a jigsaw puzzle video, did like a really long one? You'd want me to talk though, wouldn't you? I don't think I could talk for like that long. I mean, I probably could, but ooh, crazy, 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 crazy. Nice. Wow. Oh, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Oh, Megan, Megan Sosby, is that your last name? Recently started your first huge cross-stitch project. Eye candy? Nice. Nice. Oh, that's so awesome. That is so awesome. Wow, more people are asking about the bee. Um, Lee Bedford is asking me, what count fabric am I using for Waterloo Place? It is 14 count, I believe. Um, almost all my cross-stitch collectibles pieces are 14 count. Uh, that's nice. That's nice. Yep. Elaine, I finished. I finished it. Oh, so many of you guys. <laughs> I like it. Like some of you guys were like, you need to finish E Pluribus Unum or work on the project that you're closest to finishing. Finish something. I know. I used to be really like obsessive about trying to finish something. I've gotten a lot better about that in recent years. Nice. Oh. Oh, nice. Luan, you got a Ronnie Rowe piece and a Pothcary shop. Oh, that's awesome. I hope, yeah, that's so cool. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, nice. Linda Stitches, you have an art, 
I, I'm going to say this wrong. Arc de triomphe. I probably said that wrong. I know I said that wrong. That would be awesome that you should start it. Why not? Go ahead and get started. You know what? The thing is, if you don't get started now, in a year, you're going to come back and be like, oh, man, if I had started that a year ago when I was thinking about it, I'd be so much further along on it. You know, there's the thing is you can just do it a little bit at a time, you know, a little bit at a time. And eventually that builds up to, you know, awesome. What type of fabric am I using on for the baseball design? Uh, it is, uh, it is Ada. Almost everything is Ada. If it's, if it's, uh, 14, 16 count, if it's bigger. Um, and I couldn't tell you exactly what version of Ada that it is. Um, but it's just, it's pretty Ada, soft Ada. Believe it or not, there are some soft Adas that are out there. Um, but you have to put your hands on them. But uh, that's why sometimes I'll... I, I usually don't care nowadays whenever I order fabric from a stitching shop as far as like what kind of Ada it is. I went through a period, like, what was it, a year or two ago, where I bought a bunch of different um, Adas for some of the bigger projects that you see out here now. And um, it was probably two years ago. And I was very deliberate, like, I want to get this color, and this color, and that color. And uh, a lot of it was because I was just getting sick of just stitching on white. But the reality is it doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it's all good. What? What are you talking about, four grams? <laughs> I love the birds and the ending shot of... Blank, square alert, the blank. Never mind, y'all have to watch it to find out. It is worth it. What are you talking about? Talking about the movie that I just saw? Oh, now I won't be able to sleep tonight. I'll be like, what was Four Grams talking about? My husband's gonna wonder who Four Grams was. I'm gonna be mumbling in my sleep. Ah. Oh. Super Peace Rose. Blizzard did not cause much of a problem at all. Everything was fine. And it's beautiful today. Almost The snow is almost all gone. It's really pretty. Ah, oh, Sharon W. did love Captain Marvel. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's awesome. What is the world? B Project. It is well. Tower of Babel. Janet. I'm going to reach out to you, Janet, about that article. That would be awesome. Okay. Sheila asked, when I started reading Waterloo, did I stitch page after page of the same color? It's not the same color. That's the thing. If you have not done one of these pieces, and especially I would say, especially with cross-stitch collectibles, because uh, you can definitely end up thinking that. If you ever saw, on my blog there is a section of finished projects and on there further down the page there's one in New York Street New York City Street 1919 and you look at that and you think oh that's pretty much black and white but it's not it was about 18 different colors and this is about 20 different colors believe it or not it is not gray this is not like there is at most there might be 20 to 30 stitches roughly that are almost all the same color but usually there's other colors interspersed with them to get some of this detail. But it's not the same. It's not the same color. Dachshund is the same color. Like a lot of this is just nothing but purple. And even this, like baseball, like up here, there's there is a lot of white um, that's up there, but it's interspersed because there's a little bit of these hazy looking clouds and stuff. But um, it's yeah, if you do everything in all one color, it's just it's kind of bland, but it's not the same color. That's what that surprises a lot of people usually when I tell them that. All right. Yeah, everybody's commenting on Bailey, the crazy Bailey, um, sitting out in the blizzard. That's what she does. I mean, she just when it's she doesn't like sitting outside when it's warm per se, but she will sit outside in the when it's colder in the sun. She does like that. But when it snows, she just goes outside and sits. I'm wondering what on earth was the squirrel doing out there in the tree when the winds were like. 40 miles an hour like what seriously what was he doing and you couldn't hear him because when i ended up putting the music over it it blocked out a lot of the squirrel talk but in the original unedited version basically the squirrel is like chirping just spitting back down at bailey and she's just like you're gonna fall you're gonna fall i know you're gonna fall 
Nice. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that crazy for yarn working on your project? Okay, so the camera died. <laughs> that a horrible death. The battery ran out, I should say. Uh, so sadly, it cut out like 20 seconds of my ramble um, about coloration and whatnot. Like I said, I was showing this. And even where... Even where it looks like it's all the same color, it's not all the same color. Uh, there are other colors interspersed without. And it's very, you know, on these full coverage spots, it's very, at least I haven't come across it very much where you end up finding the same color like over and over and over. Like it just doesn't happen. There's usually so much more detail. But uh, yeah, no, you didn't realize that, did you? Um, all right, so we got to finish. I got the phone plugged in. That's why I'm holding it here because uh, I got I to gotta get this done so I can get this up. Um, everybody commenting, everybody saying, stay safe from the storm. We stayed safe from the storm. Oh yeah. So Isabel's moments with crafts. How much is the difference between 18 count and 25 count? Um, cause you're trying to figure out like what fabric you want to do a project on. Uh, just Google a cross stitch fabric calculator and it will ask you for certain dimensions. And one of those will be, um, fabric count. So 18 count, 25 count. And you can look at the difference in size between a 25 count and 18. It's considerable, I think. Um, you know, not as, you know, not as considerable as maybe like a 14 with a 25, but an 18 count is going to be noticeable. Uh, but just plug it into the calculator and it'll tell you. And if you have a hard time visualizing it, just use some, uh, I don't know, some tape or, or pen or something that you can like sketch out like how big it's going to be and decide if that's something you want to do or not. Yes, I changed it in my Baker Mayfield jersey. And I'm getting orange ones coming in in the next couple of days. Um, I finally, I, I ordered one from China and sadly it hasn't come. I, I'm, I'm shocked and appalled. No, I'm not. I'm not surprised. Uh, and I don't even know if I ordered it for sure. Like I thought I had, but it'll probably come in like six months and I'll be like, oh, that's where it is. It was being walked across the ocean. It's all good. Um, people, yeah, everybody's like, finish, finish something, finish it. Nice. Thank you, Rivendell, for agreeing with me that you I shouldn't be parking on Old World Map too. I know it just it would take me so long because I'm I'm. If I was stitching, oops, sorry guys. If I was stitching a page and then going down vertically, uh, that would make sense with parking, but not with, not with, uh, um, not with going horizontal. It would be a total mess. Yeah, I know. Getting to finish. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. Ooh, more people want to see uh, Greenwich Village B project. Hi, Diana, new subscriber, longtime watcher. Thanks for subscribing. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Jan Hicks. I haven't watched Jan Hicks. She had her balcony doors open. She's in Hawaii. Wow. Nice. Okay, so Karen is back with her report on the, the pencil. So what she found was the combination she found that worked was Mozart mechanical pencil set. It has HB lead, four pencil sizes, 3579 with erasers and refills on Amazon. For the eraser, you need to use artist erasers so they don't smudge or leave eraser droppings. I hate eraser droppings. I found on Amazon Prismacolor Magic Rub and at Hobby Lobby MOO Moo by Niana Company Limited. I found all marks were easier on linen or even weave to remove. And I suppose it, the amount of threads I, that had to be erased on Ada. Pencil lead size I found the best on Ada was the thinner the lead, the easier to remove. All right, there's hope for some of you guys that maybe have have some projects that were done in pencil. I've had a few guys comment on that and not been as, you know, not been super happy. Could I put this back up on the thing? I wonder if I could. No, I'll just finish here. I don't want to, I don't want to potentially lose. I don't want to lose you guys. I don't want to lose you. It's been a fun, it's been a fun interlude. I don't know why, I just feel like, Nice and relaxed and comfortable and <laughs> Laura's like, do Rainy Waterloo plays ASAP. I'm getting it done, dudes. Almost done with done with the page. Nice. Yeah. Hi Eileen. Nice. I I stitch, you knit. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, talking about the organization, the little thread bags. 
the little bags of Michael's, Joann's, and the bead section. Yeah, there's so many great options for little bags to keep things organized. Oh, nice. Country Hicks, thanks for watching. You, li you also listen to audiobooks from the library on the Overdrive or Libby apps. I couldn't get it. I, could, I don't know what it was. A Libby didn't work for me very well, but Overdrive works great. Karen also found a great video on how to keep my threads from twisting. You've been using this method, method for two days, and golly, it worked like a charm. It's on Vana Pfeiffer's video, Floss Tube Stitching Tips, Vana's Stitching Technique from three years ago. Vana has a lot of good stitcher uh, stitching technique things. I don't do down through point up through the eye, though. I just stitch my normal way. Nice. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I'm starting to get sleepy. I don't know why. That was yawning all afternoon, though. That was weird. Nice. Yep, more Greenwich Village. Oh, nice. Lori is, uh... Lori, uh, Lori is, uh, reading Dresden. Fantastic. You also think that buffalo puzzles are, are not good. I don't think I have any buffalo. I think all mine are White Mountain. But that's good to know. Anna really wants me to not tangle my threads. Anna, that requires a level of patience that I don't think I have. I'm not being a jokester either. Like, I seriously don't think I have that level of patience. I need to be retired to have that level of patience. Lori, I will check out the Vlad Taltos books by Stephen Brust. Great series. That's awesome. Thank you for the, for the recommendation. Especially if you like Dresden. That's, that's cool. All right. Angela likes me stitching bright colors. I like stitching bright colors, too. All right. You, you guys don't have a ton of snow. Nice. Nice. Read, listen to some of the Game of Thrones books first. Hey, Becca Ann. So I have the first Game of Thrones book. Oh, and um, something in my eyeball, and it's not just my eyeball. Um, uh... I have the first book. This is just weird. I have the first book, um, but it, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is with me in Game of Thrones. It's going to literally, I'm going to take this off now. It's literally going to be, all right, we'll see if we can, I'm, it's, it's literally going to be forever before I get this done. I got to be able to, to, to look at my, to use my right hand for the, uh, for the mouse. Um, but anyway, Game of Thrones. I know my husband loves Game of Thrones, so I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, P.E. Stitcher, what's up? I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, two questions. How do I think the focus piece process I have is working for me? From the outside, it looks like I'm making some serious progress. I really like the idea. That was a, whoever came up with that, I don't even remember who it was, but you are a genius. Um, I like that each week has a theme and it has a guide for, especially like this Stitch With Me. And I do definitely, I pull it out almost every day to work on some, even if it's just a little bit. So I do think that it really, really helps to have a focus piece. So it's great. In order to make these Stitch With Me videos, what is the setup? Am I stitching over a table and have the phone camera over my shoulder to get that close look at the stitches? So I use, well, okay. Mm. Okay, so I use a bendy, like um, a little mount, a phone mount that has like little bendy arms. I'll have it, I think I have it linked down below. I set that up on a, um, a standable, a stand up light. My room is a mess in here. I am not gonna show you because my husband and the rest of my family would kill you no, not you, me, would kill me if I showed that all to you. But, um, uh, and I just basically position it above, um, above my stitching and that's how I get a pretty good look. But, um, I'll have to take a picture of the setup sometime, uh, that, that I think you guys will be able to, um, see it better. But and that was a lot of trial and error. Let me tell you, uh, butterfly. Oh, I like that you're liking my videos and I like that you're new. That's awesome. Holy cow. Hey, Isabel. I did not know that you were in Nebraska. Please be safe. It is crazy up there. Um, what is my favorite count of my count of favorite count of fabric that I forever to touch on? Easy for me to say. Um, 14 count. It's just easier for me to do. Uh, what color of DMC? It really depends. I had quite the fascination with 535 for a while. Of course, 310 with Ronnie Rowe. Um, I also like, I like the darker colors. I like 3799, 3787. Um, 
414. Mm, mm. I just like the darker colors. I do. I mean, the lighter colors, I don't know. The darker colors just draw me. And that's, obviously, you guys see I, I stitch so much dark stuff. Um, oh, nice. Susan, uh, Umbrella Academy. Yeah, my husband watched it a couple weeks ago, too, and he loved it. And he's like, you got to watch it. But he knows that I like, I just don't, I don't watch very much stuff. But hopefully I will soon. Rachel Peep. I totally understand about, this is important. I totally understand about the fabric count with larger projects. I'm beginning to rethink my giant golden kite, Madeline, after prayer project. I'm considering restarting the 22 count and just stitching it on 18, but the fabric would be so huge. Still might do it anyway. LOL. Um, all right, I got to finish this up. I'm like, oh, I'm really close. Um, if you see this, Rachel, if changing the fabric would help you stitch better, faster, you would enjoy stitching more, do the switch. Just go ahead and do the switch. Um, don't push yourself to finish something that you don't enjoy doing. Just move on to something that you do. But I have switched before and I've been glad that I switched. So it's totally cool. Ariana is talking about me losing my library cards. Yep, we lose. Oh yeah, I talked about that on this last stitch with me. Um, recommend taking a pick of the front and the back of the card because again, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That would be smart. And I did on the old phone and then I haven't with this new phone, but I need to with the new phone. Um... Sharon K. I got, I did get a lot done on my days off. Um, Joni, is it Joni or Johnny? Joni. It's gotta be Joni, right? Um, you're working on a Hade Dark Procession, which is your first full coverage and love, loving it. That is awesome. But you asked me a question. Have I ever tried an Ardacy pattern? What is my thoughts in comparison? I've not stitched an Ardacy. I bought the San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge Ardacy, and then promptly lost it in my files before, like it was gone. And, um, and I went back to it, I was like, eh, I wasn't as much in love with it as I was when I first saw it. So I don't think, I don't have any other Ardacy, I, so I haven't stitched it, I couldn't tell you, but I do love their stuff. And so thank you for reminding me, I need to put them in my, on my blog as well. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys, uh, for now. Uh, I gotta finish this up because it's gonna cut me off again. Thank you so much for getting all this way through my rumbling, rambling and rumbling. Birds! Birds. Um, I gotta go eat dinner and get some stuff done tonight before bedtime. So thank you for watching me again. You guys are awesome. I, I, you know what? This interlude thing is so cool because I don't know. I just, I recognize you guys so much and it's just cool. I'm going to keep working on the blog. Go check it out. Um, and, uh, we're going to figure it out, but, uh, we're going to get it all figured out and get it up there and it's going to be awesome. And you guys are going to see how much dachshund I got done. You're going to see that the E Pluribus Unum got done. You're going to see how close I am to finishing a page on Rating Waterloo Place. It is crazy. It is crazy. All right. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.